Hi everyone, welcome to the second lecture of the series Control of Power Electronic Converters. In this lecture, we discuss the mathematical modeling of DC to DC converters. Here is the overview. We start with a brief introduction to DC to DC converters. Then we move on to its mathematical modeling in which we focus on three different models such as switcher system model, state space average model and linear racer model. In DC to DC converters, the input and output are DC. However, the value of the output voltage or current will be different from the input value. So, DC to DC converters are like transformers in DC. Based on the steady state gain, converters can be classified as step down converter in which the steady state gain is less than or equal to 1. Or in other words, the magnitude of the output will be less than the input value. The examples of step down converters are buck converter, full bridge converter. The second one is the step up converter in which the steady state gain is greater than or equal to 1, which means the magnitude of the output will be greater than the input. The main example of the step up converter is the boost converter. And finally, the step up step down converter in which the steady state gain is greater than or equal to 0. So here the steady state output can be made either greater than or less than the input value based on the switching. Examples are buck boost converter and cuck converter. Figure 1 shows a schematic representation of the DC to DC converter in which for the step down converter we have the output voltage will be less than the input whereas for step up converter the output voltage will be greater than the input value. As we have discussed in the previous lecture, mathematical models are required for analyzing the behavior of the converter and designing controllers for adjusting the behavior. Mathematical models are usually in the form of differential equations that describes the dynamics of the physical variables in the system. The mathematical models of power converters can be represented in a number of ways as listed here. The first one is the switcher system model which is the most direct model of the power converter. The switcher system model consists of a number of subsystem models and a switching index that decides switching between the subsystem acts as a control variable. In state space average model, we average the switcher system dynamics over a small period around the current instant and the duty ratio which specifies the fraction of the time in the total period a subsystem is active acts as the control variable. And finally, the linearizer model in which the average state equation is linearized over the steady state operating point which results in a linear state equation or transfer function with the small signal duty ratio or delta d as the control variable. Next, we discuss the derivation of each of these three models for the DC to DC converters with the examples. We start with the switcher system model. And to illustrate the switcher system modeling, we can consider a buck converter as shown in figure. Here, we have two switches which are operated in a complementary way. We denote mode 1 as the case in which S1 is on and S2 is off. Similarly, mode 2 corresponds to S1 off and S2 on. During mode 1, this branch of the circuit will not be there and the input DC source is connected to the circuit which delivers energy to the load and its capacitor and inductor. Similarly, during mode 2, this branch of the circuit will not be there. So, the DC source will be disconnected from the circuit and the energy stored in the inductor and capacitor will be delivered to the load. Now, corresponding to mode 1, we can have the equivalent circuit as in figure 3, which is basically an RLC circuit with a DC source. The differential equation that describes the dynamics of the circuit can be obtained by using basic circuit theory laws such as Kirchhoff's current law or KCL and Kirchhoff's voltage law or KVL. Here, by applying KCL at node 1, we have IL minus IC minus IO equal to 0 which gives IL minus E into DVC by DT minus VC by R equal to 0. And similarly, by applying KVL at loop 1, we obtain V in minus VL minus VC equal to 0, which gives V in minus L into DAL by DT minus VC equal to 0. Now, these two equations can be rewritten and compactly represented as in equation number 2 in which we take this term to the right hand side and we divide throughout by C which gives DVC by DT as minus 1 by RC into VC plus 1 by C into IL. And similarly, we have DAL by DT equal to 
minus 1 by L into Vc plus V in by L. Similarly, for mode 2, we have the equivalent circuit as in figure 4. Now, by applying KCL at node 1 and KVL at loop 1, then rearranging the equation results in equation number 3. Here, the only difference compared to mode 1 is that the DC input voltage does not appear, which makes this time 0. Now, in the state space modeling, we define dependent variables of the first order differential equation as the state variables. Therefore, here we have the capacitor voltage Vc and the inductor current IL as the state variable, which becomes the elements of the state vector x. By combining both the mode dynamics, we obtain the switching system dynamics as in equation number 4. Here, sigma is the switching index, which decides the active mode at current instant. So, based on the value of sigma, we can have two different modes or subsystem, which are as given in equation number 5. So, if sigma is 1, then mode 1 is active and the dynamics will be defined by subsystem 1. And if sigma is 2, then mode 2 will be active and the dynamics will be decided by subsystem 2. In a similar way, we can obtain the switcher system model of other DC to DC converters such as boost converter, bug boost converter, foot bridge converter, etc. for which the circuit diagram and subsystems are given in figure 5. Here, one important observation is that for bug converter and full bridge converter, the system matrices is same for both subsystems and only the input matrices changes. Here, for full bridge converter, when S1 and S2 are on, V in will be connected to the circuit similar to the mode 1 of buck converter. So, the subsystem 1 will be similar to the mode 1 of buck converter. Now, when S3 and S4 are on, the polarity of the DC input reverses and minus V in will be connected to the circuit. So, we get the V matrix like this. Since the system matrix is same for both subsystems in the case of buck converter and full bridge converter, we can represent them using a switching input model. The switching input model will be in the form of a linear time invariant or LTA system with a switching input. For the buck converter, we have two independent switch configurations. Therefore, we define a binary switching variable S as in equation number 6. Now using the binary switching variable, we define the switching input US as S into V in and here the switching input takes the value of either 0 or V in based on the switch configuration. Now using the switching input, we can rewrite the state equation for buck converter as in equation number 7 in which A and B are as in equation number 8. So based on the value of US, this term can be either 0 or B into V in. Next, we derive the switching input model of the full bridge converter. For full bridge converter, we use two binary switching variables S1 and S2 corresponding to each leg of the converter. Here, the first leg of the converter will be consist of S1 and S4 and corresponding to that we use the switching variable S1. And similarly, the second leg consists of S2 and S3 and corresponding to that we use the switching variable S2. Then, the switching input vector US is defined as T S into V in where T is a transformation matrix as given here and S will be the vector which contains the switching variables as its elements. So, if S1 is 1 and S2 equal to 0, then we have T S V in is equal to V in itself and if S1 equal to 0 and S2 equal to 1 then we have TS V in will be minus V in. So here the switching input US will be a scalar itself and using which we can define the state equation as in equation number 10 where A and B will be as in equation number 11. Note that the switching input model is equivalent to the switcher system model and can be only used for the case with the same system matrices for all subsystems. Next, we move on to the state space average model. We have the switcher system model is time varying in nature and it also results in state equation with a discontinuous right hand side. To simplify the model, we can use the Filipov's approach, which is basically state space averaging. In state space averaging, we approximate the switcher system model with an average state equation. Let's consider a general switcher system model, which is x dot equal to f sigma of x. Here, sigma is the switching index and for the time being, we consider two subsystems. So, sigma can be take value 1 and 2. Therefore, for sigma equal to 1, we have x dot equal to f1 and for sigma equal to 2, we have x dot equal to f2. Now, if we consider a small interval delta t, then x dot can be approximated as delta x by delta t. 
we can split delta t as delta t1 plus delta t2 and for the period delta t1 sigma equal to 1 which gives x dot equal to f1 and for the interval delta t2 sigma equal to 2 which gives x dot equal to f2. Now the total change in the state vector in the interval delta t equals delta x which is equal to f1 into delta t1 plus f2 into delta t2. Then the average rate of change of the state vector in the interval delta t is delta x by delta t which will be delta t1 by delta t into f1 plus delta t2 by delta t into f2 and which we can rewrite as alpha times f1 plus 1 minus alpha times f2 where alpha is delta t1 by delta t which takes a value between 0 and 1. Here delta x by delta t is an approximation of x dot and from here onwards we use the equality instead of the approximation. For switching power converters we have f1 equal to a1x plus b1 and f2 equal to a2x plus b2 and substituting this in the previous equation and group the terms with a and b together we obtain the average dynamics as in equation number 14. So here a alpha is equal to a1 alpha plus a2 into 1 minus alpha and similarly b alpha equal to b1 into alpha plus b2 into 1 minus alpha. In power converters we use the time duty ratio to represent the fraction of the time in the total period for which a switch is active. Therefore we have d is equal to t1 by t and this will be equivalent to alpha if we consider the time interval over which the dynamics is averaged as equal to t. Therefore, the average dynamics of the power converter can be rewritten as x dot equal to ad x plus bd where ad and bd will be like this. Note that here d is considered as the controlled variable and this state equation contains the product of the state vector x and the controlled input d. This makes the state equation nonlinear. We have seen that the state space average model will result in a nonlinear state equation. Now in order to simplify the model further, we can go for the linearization approach which is coming up next. In the linearization, the nonlinear state equation is approximated by a linear state equation. To derive the linearized state equation, we represent the state vector x and the control input d as the sum of its steady state value and the change from the steady state value. Here capital X and D denotes the steady state value of the state vector and the duty ratio which is specified by the desired operating point. Delta X and delta D denotes the deviation from the steady state values and this can be called as the small signal variables. Now in linearization we derive a small signal model of the system which describes the dynamics of delta X and for that we substitute this in the average state equation which results in this equation. And here capital X dot is equal to this term in red which is basically the steady state dynamics. So these two terms can be cancelled. And also for small values of delta X and delta D the product delta X into delta D will be small and can be ignored. So we make this term as 0. And this gives the small signal dynamics as in equation number 16 which is in the form of a LTA state equation with delta X as the state vector and delta D as the control input vector and a will be equal to this term and b will be equal to this term which are constant matrices for a particular value steady state operating points x and d. The general form of the linearized model will be as in equation number 17. Here delta y will be the small signal output vector and d will be usually 0 so it will be like delta y equal to c into delta x. We can also represent the linearized model as a transfer function. And from the basic control theory, we have the formula for obtaining the transfer function from the state space model as in equation number 18. The transfer function model is an input output model and it gives the transfer function g of s as the ratio of the Laplace transform of the output by input, where s is the complex frequency. Note that we have used small letter s to denote both the switching variable and complex frequency, which are different terms. To distinguish these two terms from here onwards we will be using normal font for the complex frequency and italics font for the switching variable. As an example we can consider the buck converter for which we have the ABCD matrices as in equation number 90. Here C is equal to 1 0 because we are considering the capacitor voltage as the output. Now as per this equation we have the transfer function for the buck converter as C into SI minus A inverse into B and D will be 0. The inverse of this matrix will be 1 by determinant of the matrix into adjoint matrix. The row matrix 1 0 into this matrix will be equal to 
the first row of this metric and by multiplying it with this matrix will give v in by lc so the product of these terms will be v in by lc and if you multiply it with this term we get the transformation of the buck converter as v in by lc into a square plus 1 by rcs plus 1 by lc in a similar way you can derive the transformation of other dc to dc converters as well that completes this lecture thanks for listening